All right. What's up, everyone? So welcome to the event today. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly O'Grady, Dot LA's chief host and correspondent, and I'm also head of video here at Dot LA. So I'm really pleased to be hosting another one of our startup pitch showcases. These were a huge hit last year, and so we're really excited to be able to continue highlighting some really awesome companies in the Los Angeles area. So our theme for the discussion today is, or, or the showcase today rather, is female founders in Los Angeles. So all the companies that you're going to see here pitching, all the advisors, all female, it's Women's History Month. So we wanted to make sure to shine a light on the, the really awesome diversity that's in our Los Angeles startup community. And so we also at Dot LA, I mean, that's one of our, our biggest themes and missions here is to through our stories, through our videos, through our events, make sure that we continue to shine a light on the diversity and just incredible fabric that is the Los Angeles startup community. So this event is one of the ways that we're doing that. So, okay, a couple of logistical pieces before we hop in. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna have three companies that we'll hear from today. Each one will be given five minutes to pitch their startup to you as well as our advisors. And then that will be followed by 10 minutes of questions. That's always my favorite part because I feel like you get to see behind the curtain of how investors really get to think about investing in companies when they interact with founders and such. So it's it's great for the, the founders themselves that you're going to see today, but it's also great for any of us that are thinking about starting a company or raising a round in the future. It's always great to see behind the curtain. Um, so we are going to have, after the 10 minutes of questions, we'll move on to our next founder. I'll wrap up at the end. There are no winners and losers. This is really just all about showcasing uh, these innovative companies and some really, really cool ideas and just kind of what happens when you go to raise around, what questions investors are gonna ask you um, as, as they're evaluating your company. So. Without further ado, um, I'd love to introduce our advisors. So we are joined by two powerhouse women today. We've got Jahara Tariq, who's an investor at M13, and Maxine Kosler, who is the co-managing director of LDR Ventures and Consulting. Before we welcome our first company, I'd love for each of you to just take a minute, share what it is that you do, what you're passionate about, so we can all get kind of the context of where you're coming from in the discussion. So Jahara? If you don't mind, I'd love to start with you. Sure. Um, I am an investor at M13. M13 is an early stage consumer firm. We like to say that we invest in the future of consumer behavior. So within that, a pretty wide investment aperture, but love anything that kind of coincides with e-commerce, health, food tech, um, fintech. Those are kind of the places we tend to focus. Um, I'm an investor of the team, which means I spend most of my time talking to brilliant entrepreneurs like the one we're going to hear, like the ones we're going to hear from today, um, as well as supporting our portfolio companies. Um, as far as my passion, uh, I really love anything that kind of coincides with mental health. Uh, I'm a huge mental health advocate as well as higher education. Um, and then, you know, I'm an LA native, so I love Los Angeles based entrepreneurs. Awesome. Thank you so much. Super excited to have you here. Maxine, I'd love to hear from you. Sure. Um, so I'm co-managing director of LDR Ventures. We're an early stage um, venture fund. We um, invest pre-seed, seed, seed, and uh, we take on a, a big operational role as well. We help strategically. We come from operational backgrounds. So we know that early stage founders need um, consulting help, advising help, and just mentorship as much as they need capital, especially at that early seed stage. And our best is when we can help a company grow and hand them off to a great Series A lead investor and have a partnership there. Um, we invest in wellness, healthy foods, anything healthy lifestyle. Um, we also do some legal tech um, as well to help provide legal access uh, to people more easily. Um, we invest, we take a special time and care and effort to talk to female founders, founders of color, people who just need a little extra exposure um, and some guidance. So we just, it's our, it's our mission to just take the time for those people who um, are not getting a very traditional background in what you have to do to pitch. Mm, that's great. 
Well, ladies, thank you so much for, for joining us today and for sharing your time and for what you're about to share your insights as we, we go through the different companies. Um, I also just wanted to mention, Maxine shared this really interesting opportunity with me before we hopped on here. As she said, her firm focuses a lot on legal tech as well, but there's this interesting opportunity. It's run by Champions of Law for Entrepreneurs. So they're giving entrepreneurs a chance to win 5,000 in legal services to help you know, startups grow their businesses. Um, and it is called the Find Me My Lawyer Challenge, which I love. So if you're interested, Annie's going to pop the link in the, in the chat below, but obviously a, a great opportunity if you're thinking about starting a business and, and just figuring out all the steps that you need to take there. But thank you so much for introducing yourselves. Without further ado, no one wants to hear from me. We want to hear from the companies. I want to welcome our first founder, who has, is going to tell you about her fitness startup, Struck Club. Amira Pollock, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly, and, and thanks to everybody. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Amira Pollock. I'm the founder and CEO at Struct Club, the platform for fitness instructors. We're a community of thousands of instructors in over 700 cities and over 35 countries who seek to inspire your movement with all the right music. Our platform empowers these vibrant uh, global instructors with tools to design and monetize impeccable workouts to fierce playlists, starting with spinning, treadmill running, as well as interval and sculpt training with just body weight and dumbbells. Many of you know already that when your workout is tightly choreographed to a perfectly curated playlist full of bangers, your efficiency, your effectiveness, and your overall enjoyment just skyrockets to another level while feeling easier. In behavioral psychology, this effect is called biomusicology. And once you hit your stride, your workouts become something you can truly look forward to. And for any of you who are like, yeah, right, enjoying a workout while doing more faster is impossible. Hover your phone over this smart code right now and start with a free workout in the Struck Club app on the App Store today. In the meantime, let me just say this topic is personal. I grew up right here in LA too, born and raised in a Filipino American household filled with music, dancing, and jumping around as evidenced by this trampoline. And this is my childhood. And in a lot of ways, I never really grew up. After getting my bachelor's at Princeton and started my, starting my career in tech, I became obsessed with fitness classes that were really more like nightclubs in disguise. Soul Cycle, Rumble, you name it. And I got so obsessed that while getting my MBA, I got my own fitness instructor certification and turned the basement of the Harvard gym into my own spinning nightclub every morning at 6 a.m. And that's when it hit me. Instructor-led classes were clearly driving the next wave of growth in the fitness industry. But guess what? We, the instructors, were getting less than minimum wage after spending countless unpaid hours putting our hearts and souls into preparing these classes. So I started Struck Club in 2018 to help instructors like me cut unpaid prep time and scale paid teaching time with a simple app to manage class design. And since then, of course, we know the fitness landscape has changed quite a bit, especially with the pandemic, causing a permanent shift to at-home exercise to the tune of $40 billion. So this past year, we expanded our mandate to help our instructors monetize their Struck Club assets in this new at-home fitness world when COVID shut down all their studio classes. Today, we're excited to present an end-to-end -end platform where anyone can gain access to the more than 15,000 workouts set to matching playlists, all curated by independent instructors right here in our app. Here's how it works. For fitness instructors, Struct Club is a platform to design and monetize workout routines synced to music. Tag your songs with exercises, intensity levels, and any other workout instructions. When you're done, submit your workouts in the app and make money. Now anyone can spin, run, and get stronger with Struct Club by picking a workout and hitting play. See the full roadmap of what you're doing, how long is left, and what's coming up next, all synced to your favorite music on Spotify and Apple Music. You can customize and tweak any aspect of the workout and get your sweat on from your iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV. 
So what are you waiting for? Download Strut Club today, start working out for free. Subscribe for $9.99 a month to get all access to our top tier featured work catalog. And if you're like me and you want more custom workout sets and playlists, plus exclusive access to special programs directly from instructors, level up to pro for $14.99 a month. And 50% of every dollar you spend with us is distributed through royalties across our hardworking instructors based on how often you're enjoying their workouts. So now finally, instructors can make recurring revenue for awesome workouts and plans that they curate. Last, we wouldn't be here without the hard work of our amazing team. Shout out to Ian, John, and Alex. Shout out to our advisors like Lauren, Aaron, Carol, <laughs> and Khaled and our backers at Techstars, Comcast, NBC, Universal, Unusual Ventures, and Apple. And amazing equipment and apparel partners like Shimano and more soon to be announced. And as we get into Q&A and note to our investors on the line, since this video is uh, live recorded on YouTube as well, uh, and public, <coughs> all sticking to uh, our publicly available data. Uh, thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, Amira. So uh, Maxine Jahara, if we can have you come on screen, I'm going to turn it over to you for some question and answer. And whoever wants to hop in first, please feel free. I'm happy to hop in first, Jahara, if that's okay with you. Okay. I just downloaded it. I did that on my app because I'm going to go for a run after this. So I'm going to try it out. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I was just having this issue yesterday of trying to put a playlist together. <laughs> So what I would like, thank you. Very good presentation and deck and, um, you know, really, really well done. Um, I want to really go through the revenue stream. You know, where is that coming from? So if you could explain that in detail, please. Yep. So you jump into Struck Club, you can, and uh, as you're going on your run today, there are a couple of sample classes that you can do for free. So we want to make that available for folks to see what they're getting into. We don't have a platform with a video today. Um, so that's also uh, really important. And so when, you know, there, there are actually a few steps along the journey. So first, uh, if you want to subscribe to get all access to the select workouts, all the select workouts that you see in that first screen that uh, you shared, as well as the various categories, it's $9.99 a month. Um, and then if you want to, like, if you're nitpicky like me and you want to create like DIY everything and you want to share and receive unlimited material, say from friends, or from instructors directly, then there's a pro level and that's $14.99 a month. So those are the subscription tiers, freemium, $9.99 a month for the basic subscription and $14.99 for pro. Okay, so all of your revenue is coming just from a consumer subscribing to the app. Yeah, okay. we do have, I will say, um, I mentioned a couple of uh, brand partners that we have. You'll also notice in the app that there's some free sponsored material and uh, these are for brands who want to create, maybe there are apparel brands. I know we have some apparel brands on the line today or equipment brands. And they're not really, you know, they're not content companies, but they want to create some kind of 360 experience around their product. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've started to, we have a, a wait list at the moment for any brands that are on the line. Um, they've started to sponsor classes that are made with, you know, their brand logo on it. Got it. And then what is the percentage of revenue that's getting shared with the instructors? percent 50 percent of of how are you figuring that out 50 percent of what yeah so um say you pay for a 9.99 uh, per month subscription and 50 percent of that we cut and basically we look at how often you're playing the different workouts of the different instructors and so we'll distribute that based on uh, the popularity and, and the play counts of the different classes on a monthly basis so it's a royalty model uh, for the instructors and you've worked out like with music, you've worked out how many cents per play or that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. And how do the instructors feel about this? Do they feel, cause they're, they're not going to make that much. Is it more, they think it's, they're just pr promoting their own personal brand. I think that, so historically is, these instructors haven't been paid anything for their pre preparation time. And what they see at, you know, the, these assets as is their uh, preparatory material, kind of like their curriculum for class as a teacher. And so the, just the ability to monetize that. And in a way that, you know, I, I'm not just telling them, Hey, you get a fixed fee for the hour that you spent. It's like, as long as it's popular, as long as you promote it, you'll continue to generate revenue from it is just 
a whole new, it's a whole new opportunity. Uh, typically these instructors also, cause they're paid on the hour, uh, income is like pretty inconsistent. Um, that's what I felt as an instructor myself. You're just like always hustling for classes and you're only paid for the time that you're there till the time that you leave and you don't get a cut of the, of the upside. And so it's just nice to be able to have something ongoing and recurring uh, for the stuff that the, the work that you're going to be doing anyway. Um, so actually so far uh, it's been really transformational and positive feedback. Is that one of your main forms of marketing is having the instructors themselves promote the app? Today, that's the primary form of marketing. Okay. Okay. Joe, I don't want to take up all the time. Please jump in. Yeah. Um, I guess my question is like kind of how do you vet for like quality of instructor, right? Because I think if a consumer comes on, right, like me as like the end user comes on and I try out an instructor I, d- I don't know, right, and I have a poor experience, like I'm going to turn pretty quickly off the app, right? But I also imagine that like you're kind of targeting the long tail instructors who aren't like getting paid a lot via like Peloton or, you know, like some of these other like large fitness studios, maybe like a Barry's. Right. So I'm curious kind of how you think about that kind of balance. Yeah. I will say that behind the scenes today, it's a little bit of an analog process that over time will be automating. And so when we think about good and we think about, you know, bad classes, good classes, bad classes, good instructors, bad instructors, what we really like to do is boil that down to variables Uh, to an extent similar to say like Apple's review process on the app store, there are degrees to which stuff is automated. You don't need certain rules. We automatically detect that. We send it back. Can you please edit this or improve it? Um, And we want to give consumers the power to understand as much as uh, is required about the instructor in advance. So you'll see the instructor bios in the platform. You can actually also vet them by checking out their Instagram. You can also vet the workout in advance. We give away, I mean, all the playlists are available for free. You can see them on uh, our Struck Club Spotify account, or you can see the full preview in advance. Just so it's really important, like you said, that folks know what they're getting into and they know what to expect. Um, Currently, we don't have any instructor voice cueing or instructor videos. And so those aren't factors into playing into whether the class is high quality or low quality. It's really more about the curation of the workout and um, the, you know, how it, how it coordinates with the playlist. And I will say today on the point um, that I made about it being a little bit of an analog process, we do personally strap on our own heart rate monitors and test every single workout before it's made available um, to the public today. And so we vet that for safety and we vet it for quality control. And sometimes we do send it back to, for anybody who's an instructor here today, we have a whole a guide around uh, and some collateral learning collateral about how to put together a great class. Uh, it's free and it's on our website uh, so that uh, we can set you on a path for success. I wanted to, having um, just uploaded it and it asked me to choose if I wanted to um, connect with Spotify or with Apple Music. So you're not involved in the music at all. You're, that's completely handled. So there's no royalty and permission in for me in, in situation. Correct. So we don't play any music out of our app. Actually, we integrate directly with Spotify and Apple Music. And so you will, if you want to be playing music alongside our app, you will need a Spotify subscription or you will need an Apple Music subscription because the music is going to be playing out of your account. So the instruct, but you said the instructors are giving audio instruction or it's currently no. So it's visual instruction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause I'm just saying like, if I'm running, I'm not looking at my phone to get instruction. Yeah. For the audio, for any audio running, um, outdoor running. So I mentioned in our app today, um, the running, uh, the running programming is for treadmill running. But for outdoor running, we do have an outdoor run that's free and available on uh, our Spotify podcast channel. Um, Mm -hmm. So we have some audio cues. Um, We basically uh, have like a podcast where there's talk, audio, talk, audio using uh, Spotify's feature around mixed talk music playlists. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just so for your run later and anybody who's going on a run later. Okay. (laughs) Awesome. I think that's it for me. Do you have any questions for us? Oh my gosh, I could ask questions all day. Um, this is great, but I, I mean, I'm curious about what it is you both do at high level for your fitness if we have time. Maybe we only have a minute. <laughs> I mean, just, we've got a couple minutes, so 
Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I do. I just started running again and I've been playing a lot of tennis because it's all outdoor safe stuff to do. My house is 2K. I'm married with kids and work from home most of the time. So I have come after a year, I have come to see, I just can't work out at home. It's just not happening. And it's really frustrating. Yeah. Uh, I have a Peloton uh, as of recently. And then I do like a lot of just like workouts in my backyard. Um, and then up until like the past few months, like was into running, but kind of got bored with it. I'm going to throw it to Kelly too. You guys are all active. This is an active group. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Uh, I do a lot of in-home workouts. I'm a big subscriber to uh, John Benton's theory of fitness, but I actually also do use Strut Club because little known fact, Amira and I went to business school and I was one of her guinea pigs for the, the direct to consumer uh, workouts. And I'm not a runner, but it actually made me not, not hate running. I didn't, I, I won't say it got me to the point where I was like, yes, like let's run, but that's because I, I can't run very well. <laughs> But I got to do the bike uh, piece as well once we actually get back into being able to go back to uh, the gyms and such. But Amira, thank you so much for sharing Strut Club with us today. Super interesting to hear about everything that you're doing. And thank you to our, our investors for sharing their perspective. Now, next up, I want to welcome uh, Mitch, who is going to be talking to us about her product, Oya. And uh, it's really interesting, female focused and female founded. Very, very curious to hear about this one. Uh, Mitch, take it away. Oh, I think you muted. Oh, no, I think I'm good. Yep. Okay. yep, you're good. Yeah. And can you see my screen? Let me see. Am I sharing screen? Not yet. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. we're good now? Okay, perfect. Yes. All right, good morning and thank you Dot LA for hosting today and Jawahar and Maxi, I'm such a big fan. Uh, so excited to be here and so I'm gonna dive in. Uh, so I'm Mitch Gilbert, I'm from UCLA and I'm the CEO of Oya Fem Tech Apparel. At Oya, we believe in feminine health, so we make V-friendly leggings. And that's right, V is in vagina, a word that I'll use a lot in today's presentation because half of us have them and no one talks about how to keep them healthy. And today I'm pitching for the connections and guidance we need to be a major player in the $29 billion leggings market. To start, the D2C leggings market with the FinTech spin is going bananas. In 2018, the global market again totaled to 29 billion. In 2020's fourth quarter, athleisure sales were up 26% from 2019, since people are wearing more athleisure during COVID. And by 2025, FinTech is expected to be a $50 billion industry because women are becoming more focused on wellness. Despite the industry size, it has a fatal flaw. Our incumbents don't think about vaginas, so they make leggings that make women sick. And I know it makes people uncomfortable that 75% of women will struggle with feminine health issues like yeast infections and bacterial vaginosis in their lifetime. But to be really candid, we have a lot of vaginas in this room, and 30% of them have bacterial vaginosis right now, according to the CDC. Add to that the fact that leggings make women two times more likely to develop feminine health issues, and we have a big problem. We're the first to address the legging vaginal health problem with FemTech leggings that absorb leaks and increase crotch ventilation. We have four SKUs available at $85 in two lengths and sizes small through XXL. Our highest seller is the Goddess 7 8th legging in black. They also make your butt look great, and they come in dope colors. Overall, we're solving the legging vaginal health problem in four ways. First, our V-friendly leggings are like nothing out there in terms of leak absorption and breathability. Second, we're targeting customer segments who incumbents ignore, like silver sisters or perimenopausal women. Third, we're for women by women, so we're always looking for ways to support vaginal health across our brand. And fourth, we're building a V-friendly community of women. Over the past year, we've raised 25K in non-dilutive funding. We filed a provisional utility patent to create a portfolio of patents and trademarks for future licensing opportunities. And that's because we're no longer a theory or an MBA project. We are ready to launch and we have the product, customers, supply chain, and manufacturers to prove it. 
Our team has the expertise to scale and be successful. Up top, my co-founders and I represent brands like Nike, where I worked in apparel operations. This experience helped us build a supply chain with profitable SKUs. This is also my fourth company. Below, our advisors represent brands like Nordstrom and DeVita. Initially, we're going after recent moms, women who like running or hit athletes, and silver sisters, or again, perimenopausal women. And this is because they have vaginal health problems that are ignored by incumbents, and they spend money on comfortable apparel. Also, the markets are quite large. Our acquisition plan is modeled after LA-based LA DSC brands like Fabletics and Dollar Shave Club. Our progress shows that we're going to capture customers by one, distributing the OBGYNs across the country for endorsements, endorsements and awareness building. Two, partnering with health groups and sports clubs for community building. Three, creating edutaining content that celebrates women and combats their shame about feminine health. And four, target marketing. With our ops experience, we built a supply chain that delivers best in class unit economics from launch and our margins will further improve. With an $85 price point, we initially have a $30 contribution margin that will grow to over $40 per legging as we scale and mature. And I'm particularly excited again about you, Maxi and Joe O'Hara because of your experience with consumer and the power of CBG contribution margins. Our leggings are beloved by customers because we're addressing needs that our incumbents ignore and we flatter the figure. Qualitatively, this is evidenced by these evangelists who like the leak absorbency and compression of our leggings. Quantitatively, it's evidenced by us generating four times our CAC and revenue. So to date, we've pre-sold over $2,700 worth of product in two months with $700 of ad spend, primarily through LinkedIn, Instagram, and pitch competitions. We're seeking 600 k to continue to improve the product, get the product out to OBGYNs uh, for endorsements, do marketing and PR, and produce and launch more bottoms like capris and eventually underwear. Finally, we're launching on Friday, March 19th, and this is such an exciting time for us. We're going to win in the market because it's highly fragmented, it's growing, and women want our product. There are so many comparables out there like Spanx, Thinks, and Carbon 38 who are making eight to nine figures of revenue each year because of their women empowering apparel. So I'm pumped that you ladies get why it's important to invest in solutions that empower women, and thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mitch. Um, Maxine Jahar, take it away. Are there any competitors like that are specifically targeting leggings? Uh, so our products, uh, so competitors typically fall into two buckets. So on the legging side, there's not much because incumbents are typically focused on, on like athletic branding like Nike or style and fit like Lululemon. Yeah not feminine health. Like you've never heard either of those brands say the word vagina and you never will. Um, and on the content yeah. side, uh, most solutions are embarrassing and uncomfortable, including uh, pads, diapers, and surgery. Uh, or there's underwear, which doesn't address issues around like uh, leg and breathability. Uh, and we differentiate ourselves in the market because we've created a comfortable, stylish, and convenient solution that, that supports the vagina and makes women feel empowered and embarrassed. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, where do you manufacture your leggings and what do the unit economics look like? Uh, so in my heart, I really want to manufacture in LA, but I also wanted to launch this year and it was COVID. So these things were very difficult. And so we actually established a supply chain in the interim um, in China that we've been working with, which has really good lead times and great unit economics. So we are targeting an $85 price point. Um, and then for every legging, we're looking at COGS, about $27 per legging, um, packaging and shipping, uh, $5, customer acquisition, $7.65. And then initially contribution margins are about $30 per legging. But by year three, as we scale, that contribution margin will grow to about $42 per legging as, we, uh, as our business scales and matures. Yeah. Um, Maxie, do you have any questions? I do. I do. A couple of things. Great. I, I, you're definitely very on target with this. Um, we've been pitched so many brands around feminine health, more in the, um, you know, other, other products around wellness around it, but I know there are a couple underwear brands or feminine health brands that also include underwear. 
um, that are addressing some of these issues. What I wanted to find, what is the technology? It's a mesh that you're using that's like the big differentiator? Yeah, so it's actually the design of the legging. So the average legging, I mean, I think if you take like a Lulu, like a line Lux legging, or, you know, it's probably about four to five panels. Uh, so panels being where you have seams and how the legging comes together. Ours have 16. And so we literally like flip the construction of a legging on its head to be uh, comfortable for the vagina because like most leggings like Lulu and Nike were actually designed by men. And so our leggings have um, hidden mesh panels on the inner thigh uh, that promote ventilation as well as a, um, I wish I could turn my camera on so that way you could see the technical drawings, but there's also a, a mesh panel on the outside of the crotch. So we call that a crotch gusset um, and that helps promote airflow. Inside the legging, it's essentially the crotch gusset is a pocket. And so there's a removable pad. So this pad is like antimicrobial. So it's eating odors and all of these things, but it's also absorbing all leaks. So that's like urinary leaks, menstrual leaks, um, as well as uh, you're in sweat. So it's like absorbing all of this moisture and eating it. Um, and then it's removable. So whatever you're like, I think like some women have started calling it workout then switched out. So you can just essentially take it out and like keep going about your day. Um, also it's, there's nothing like it in the market. And so OBGYNs have like really rallied behind it. So we're like the first OBGYN approved legging. Um, and uh, also our firm, Fimwick and um, Fimwick, who supported the patenting of GoPro and like Google uh, initially when they were very early stage has really gotten excited about it. And so they're actually our, our pro bono law firm and they've been working on our patent. And so we wanna create trademarks and a portfolio of patents around design since it's so new and there's nothing like it in the market. Got it, got it. Fenwick's our firm too. We're, we're big fans of theirs. Yeah, they, they actually, it's interesting because we met them through the milking competition last year and um, they were helping advise us when we were super new and Fenwick actually joined a UCLA in, uh, pro bono program. So that way they could stay with us as a firm because we could not afford their rates at all. And so we've been with Fenwick since the beginning. That's good. They're amazing. Is it, do you have higher labor costs because they've got to stitch together the 16 panels? Yeah, so producing in LA uh, would be difficult because of that. But again, like during COVID, factories were looking for work. And so we actually were able to negotiate a contract around like our unit costs because this factory wants to stay with us as a stopgap until, you know, we can get back to LA like when factories are like actually open. So we've been doing pretty well on margins. And given my um, experience in like Nike operations, I can say that we pretty much have best in class, well, not best in class, but comparable margins. Um, we've actually modeled a lot of our supply chain after what I saw in Nike. So we, but because we're smaller, we're beating them in terms of lead times. And we're also uh, comparable in terms of like unit economics. Got it. Got it. And I want to say, I think I'm, we're invested in a company called Joylux uh, VFit. And there, if you look them up, it's, it's for help with women, new moms and um, perimenopausal women with incontinent issues. Um, but the same thing is their first marketing wave has been through the OBGYNs, um, urologists, um, yeah. and things like that. So it's a similar marketing path that has been very successful for them. Yeah, we love it. It's a uh, OBGYNs have like, you know, uh, we actually learned about this issue from OBGYNs. I didn't, uh, realize it was an issue. So at, um, I'm going to be fully transparent. I love working out and I wear leggings all the time and I got a yeast infection. So I went to the OBGYN at UCLA and she was just super upset about leggings. She was like, I don't understand why women are always wearing them. The D1 athletes are always here. And I was kind of like, say less. That's very interesting. And so we started interviewing more and more OBGYNs and just we uncovered that idea that leggings make women two times more likely to get sick. We un uncovered this idea that 30% of women have bacteria vaginosis at all times. 30% of women are dealing with like urinary incontinence. And 
the solutions on the market were like uncomfortable or they weren't really addressing it. And some people will say, well, you can just wear underwear. Well, that's not uh, solving the lagging issues of breathability and things. So like you could wear underwear, but still you might get sick. And so we have been partnering with OBGYNs very closely during the development process. And so the fact that they've responded so well to the lagging has been really exciting for us. Is there a national organization that you can get certified by or endorsed by? Um, no, we haven't because OBGYNs are like they're uh, they're they're not like dentists, right? Where like you can get like you can get like dentists approved, like because uh, the stakes are a little higher because of a. Uh, because you know they have like babies that they have to actually oversee and so what we've seen has worked best and like based on our legal expertise it's like working with OBGYNs and personally getting like approval and things like that um we would be interested in partnering with a national organization as if we scale but based on what we've heard from like board certified doctors that would be difficult to do and we would need to do it because we would need to do a whole medical study um, and we're towing that line between being a wellness product versus like a medical device. Sure. sure. Okay, makes sense. Medical devices are very expensive and, and um, very hard. And we, again, we tow that line between being a functional product because we don't want to just be fashionable, but we do have that fashion element. And we, medical devices is a whole nother bucket. You're more in like a functional food category, like like a supplement or something, or a, 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 a chocolate that has a supplement in it. Yes, kind of exactly. Like they make your butt look good, which is great because we've gotten a lot of like feedback about that on our website. And that was actually part of our design. <laughs> like I was, I'm a designer and, but at the same time it's technical. So sometimes we get questions like, how are you going to keep up with a Lulu who's coming out with like all these skews all the time, like every season and all of these colors. And it's like, that's not our end game. Our end game is to help women who are suffering, you know, with breathability or like moisture or things like that. And, um, who feel very frustrated and ashamed about those issues. And so giving them solutions that help them feel, you know, uh, more beautiful because all vaginas deserve to be happy. And I'm just going to say that I believe it it's out there. Oh my gosh. I love, I love, that was a great quote to end on. <laughs> all vaginas <laughs> deserve to be happy. Female founder pitch showcase. I think, I think that's the the quote for social media. Um, listen, bitch, thank you so much for sharing. Okay. I feel like, you know, the first, first founder, I've got what I should be working out with. And now with you, I have what I need to be wearing when I work out. So I'm learning so much, but I have to get myself a pair of these leggings because those statistics that you shared are, um, very scary. And I wasn't aware of them before. So thank you so much for, for sharing everything with us. Now we're going to move on to our final company. So I want to welcome the um, night of co-founder or of the night co-founder, Courtney Nichols. So Courtney, if you want to come on screen, I will hand the virtual mic over to you. Hey, how you doing? Great. Thanks so much for joining us. One second. Uh, let me get to present. So hi everyone, I am Courtney Nichols, the co-founder of Of The Night. We deliver party packages for outrageous nights in. Meet your average partier who hosts around seven parties a year and spends roughly $200 per party, so around $1,400 yearly. To them, planning a party is a really stressful event. Why is it stressful? Because on average, that's a total of 10 hours dedicated to throwing a party, which isn't even the party in itself. Who has time for that? Definitely not Celia. Meet Celia. Celia is a repeat customer above the night. Celia is 25 years old, loves social media, and spends an average of $81 on a night out. She's got a friend coming into town in two weeks. They want to have an epic night. They want to drink. They want to dress up. What are her options? A night out at the local bar, hire a party planner, or don't do any work and go to a friend's party. Celia's friend tells her about Of The Night. Of The Night embodies the magic of theme events and individually packaged as magic for evenings spent inside. Celia discovers Of The Night is her one-stop shop for all of her party needs. Delivered directly to her front door, each Of The Night party package includes themed food, drink, decor, costuming, activities, and music, and is perfectly suited for two partiers. She is sold. 
Celia goes to ofthenight.club and orders her Garden Gnome of the Night party package. She is thrilled that Of the Night also offers colorful add-ons to make her night that much more extraordinary. So she adds on both a lighting package and a theatrical delivery, both themed to match her Of the Night party package. Celia's Of the Night party package arrives along with the serenading, later hosen wearing German man. Her party package features German mead, Bavarian pretzels with assorted mustards, gnome hats and beards, gardening kit and illuminated trees. Celia is just one of the customers who has discovered new and innovative ways of celebrating without the night. Celia is now favorite one-stop party shop. And I mean, if we want to brag, since our debut in July 2020, we have delivered 12 unique theme packages to 300 Los Angeles households. Our themes have ranged from When Doves Cry, a Prince-themed Valentine's Day celebration, to a Ruth Bader Ginsburg election coping package. We have worked with over 60 brands, ranging from local businesses like Foria Wellness and Wheelberg Kombucha, to global brands like Red Bull and Matzah Project. With our customer favorite add-on, the theatrical delivery, we have provided paid opportunities for out-of-work actors. Integral to Of the Night is our continued support of philanthropic organizations. So we donate a percentage of each sale to a progressive nonprofit. And our woman-run team is continuing to grow. So what's next? Since our debut, we have only delivered Of the Night in Los Angeles. We constantly receive DMs, phone calls, emails, asking Of the Night to deliver to other cities and states. In April, we will be expanding our delivery reach to nationwide shipping. Of the Night 2.0 launches April 15th and it will include a new online marketplace. We will be launching new themes every month and we will be upgrading to more sustainable practices featuring evergreen products in each of our packages. So what's our plan for success? Be everywhere. Studies show 76% of American millennials now prioritize experiences over buying just stuff. Celia is just one example of the 76%. Create community with increased original content, collaborations with acclaimed artists, and virtual experiences paired with our package themes. And an increased focus on B2B partnerships through hotel experiences and TV and film releases. So why party without the night? Well, they say the best parties are curated by the best partiers. For nearly a decade, I have produced and hosted extravagant food and drink events throughout the US and Europe. And my other night partner, Blake Shine, has years of experience designing immersive music festival stages across the US. Each of our $175 of the night party packages are fully realized experiences with handwritten step-by-step -step instructions to guide you from your first toast to a, your 2 a.m. last call. Of the Night is a new breed of party in a box. Of the Night packages everything you need to fully transform your evening. Recently, we surveyed 50 Of the Night customers and 100% said they would purchase from us again. What's more exciting is that our fans are actively posting about us and raving about us to their friends. We've also gotten rave reviews from Time Out, LA Weekly, NBC Thrillist, and Spectrum News. We know and understand the need for innovative forms of gathering and celebrating, and that's precisely why we created Of the Night. Of the Night, subscribe to the best night of your life. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Courtney. Ed, so if right. we could have um, Jahar and Maxine come on, we'll turn it over to you guys for some questions. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, I love this idea. Uh, it seems so fun. And it immediately made me want to stop having to adhere to social distancing and go to a giant party. So this is very, very fun. <laughs> uh, I just want clarity on, so like these items I get in my party in a box, are these items that I own or that I'm renting? That and you like, own. Okay. And then talk to me kind of about how you think about like scaling this, this business, because I'd find it'd be, I would think it'd be pretty hard to create like, hand and I'm assuming you're hand creating all these like boxes right now especially with all these like directions but I guess as you start scaling and items become more heavy and you're starting to sh ha incur shipping costs across the U.S. like how do you kind of think about that? Well currently uh, we it was just a party of two it was Blake and I my partner doing all the hand deliveries in Los Angeles from our debut up until today which allowed us for about like six thousand dollars profit per month uh, and about 50 deliveries per month. So with this uh, now shipping nationwide, we're allowed to have about $12,000 gross a month. And 
uh, delivered to around 100 households. And again, that's just two of us. And now we're continuing to increase our team. Now we have a head of marketing, a head of social media. But the goal is to just continually to continually grow so that we can really uh, we can adhere to the more demand. Um, and then are these like pre-produced like themes? So it's like I go on your site and then I can choose like, you know, this type of party or that type of party, or am I coming to you and suggesting party type? Um, at Current, you would come to our website and we release a new theme each month. And that, that theme would be secular to that month only. So you would be able to purchase it for that month or subscribe and you get a new theme package each month. Both Blake and I are admittedly theme obsessed. This is what we've done for over a decade is create really fantastical themed experiences. And this modularly recreates those fantastical themed experiences we've done in the past. So we, our themes are they're colorful, they're whimsical, they're, they're not your average theme. Hence why we did a When Doves Cry Prince theme package, why we did a Ruth Bader Ginsburg election coping package. These are themes that really tap into the market that really loves something that's that much more extraordinary. Got it. Maxie, do you, you wanna jump in? Sorry. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, oh, hi, yeah, can you hear me now? Me. Yeah. Okay, sorry, we had a mute thing. Um, <laughs> I wanted to hear more about, I know you were saying you were doing 6,000 profit per month. I wanted to hear more about your margins and then how this 2.0 into, let's say, New York, you know, what that's going to look like, especially in terms of margins. And do you need a, a, someone based in New York to be doing that? Uh, so for 2020, we grossed around $46,000 in sales, which includes both our base party packages and our our add-ons. Uh, we will be shipping nationwide, which will allow us to now double that amount. So we're looking at about $100,000 in profit in 2021. Profit or will revenue or profit? In gross profit. So gross it, before. So our margins are around 56% per package is what we make versus spend. Um, and our cost breakdown is items that go into the package. Thankfully, we have a really lovely uh, network of sponsors that we work with. So a lot of our product is actually donated. Um, also, because we have aligned nonprofits, there's more of an impetus for sponsors to come on board to showcase their product. Also, they're showcasing their product in a way that's a lot more innovative than, say, just going to your average bar or restaurant or party supply store. This is a way that's a lot more engaging and also allows for a lot more user generated content. Uh, we also create a lot of content in house, which is really appealing to our sponsors. So we are big on the photo shoots. We're big on IG live. Blake and I are very accessible as company owners. It's really about buying into these worlds that we create. So it's very important for us to always be at the helm of the company. Uh, but yeah, 56% is where we're at, but obviously we want to get that number lower. I mean, we want there to be more donations. We want there to be lower costs of goods so that we're working more on a wholesale basis. Uh, the goal is obviously to decrease what we're spending so we make more money. <laughs> so the idea for expansion will be shipping. So the, it will the, be shipping. Will the in-person delivery still happen or that? will. In this first iteration into Of the Night 2.0, the theatrical deliveries will still be available in Los Angeles only. And if you do receive the theatrical delivery, you will be able to also receive perishables, which obviously can't be shipped. So like the apple pie that came in our rhinestone cowboy package will now be available if you get the theatrical delivery. But if we're looking at further down the road, a year, 16 months ahead of time, we, will, we want market managers in each of the cities. And also we want to start employing and enlisting these out of work actors in cities across the US to do the theatrical delivery. The theatrical delivery has really become a staple above the night, uh, especially in the past six months. The amount of joy that is brought to people's doorsteps is really something extraordinary, especially amidst all the dreariness of the past year. Very cool. So what do you need right now? What's your um, ask in order to grow? Uh, currently, we're crowdfunding. We are on the iFundWomen platform. Uh, we just launched last Monday. We're at 15000 We're looking to get 75000 which will give us a nice cushion to now do the nationwide expansion, also grow our team, bring on more market managers, also bring on more substantial brand ambassadors to get the word out. Uh, because Blake and I come from this world originally, we thankfully came with a really nice network of 
fans, followers when we launched. So to date, we haven't spent a single cent on marketing. It's all been with an email list that we had previously. It's all with us getting the word out, being really good at viral content. But we want to spend money on marketing. You know, we want to do guerrilla marketing. So it's more like billboards, pop ups. Um, onslaught of people arriving at people's doors or more traditional marketing in the sense of Instagram and Facebook and social media. But we haven't spent a single cent on that. And we know that with that money, we can grow like exponentially. What's your long-term goal? Would you want like a party city to buy you? What are you thinking? Oh, uh, we want to be a household figure. We want to be a household name. And so one of the ways, not only with our party packages that we want to get there is with uh, items that are our own that we track, we patent, we trademark also with our own board game. Would be yeah, it. exactly. And to get onto shelves. Uh, I'm not entirely sure party city is the exact right demographic for us because we're a little bit more, um, uh, I am a little bit, yeah, elevated, but to get into gift stores of museums, to get into hotels, to get into even maybe a uh, more independent movie houses, places where, our product would be the perfect like post experience purchase so that you can continue the party back at your house or in your hotel room. <laughs> Depends where you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very cool. You're very clear about your brand and your intention. I like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Um, well, listen, Courtney, thank you so much for sharing. Thank I actually, you. while you were chatting, I was on your website. I was like, I'm going to do this this weekend, but I saw you I know. launching we're, April we're 15th. We're in the midst of crowdfunding. Yeah. Listen, I've got it <laughs> marked on my calendar when I'm going to get this, this box. I'm going to sign up for your, your first month out there once you relaunch. Thank um, you. So this thank is you, thank very you. exciting. <laughs> um, well, listen, I wanted to, to say thank you again to all of our founders, Amira, Mitch, and Courtney for sharing your passion and your companies with us. I personally have a lot of things now to check out and, and try out fitness, apparel wise, party wise. It kind of will take me through my day, right? I'll work out, I'll work out in style and, and health, and then I'll get to party afterwards, which will be great. Um, I also want to thank our, our investors, uh, Jahara and Maxine, for sharing your perspective on what you think about when you're looking at companies, just so we can kind of get a little bit of a peek behind the window. So thank you so much for joining us today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. And then finally, I want to thank our audience. So thank you so much for continuing to support us, come to these events, hear about all of the awesome companies and VCs in our community. A playback of this event is going to be available on our site at .la by the end of the day. If you want to go back, uh, share it with friends and whatnot, or reach out to the companies that we featured today. Make sure if you love our content that you have subscribed to our newsletter and be on the lookout for more events. We are doing strategy sessions, pitch competitions. And if you haven't seen, we are doing our spring media summit called Dada Light Intersect. It's going to be on April 28th. It is so exciting. I'm personally a huge media buff. So we're going to be bringing a lot of leaders, innovators together virtually. We're still doing virtual things. <laughs> we'll get there to in person, but to discuss what does it take to win at the center of this, this intersection that is media and tech that is happening right now in Los Angeles. So be sure to be on the lookout for speaker announcements and registration. And that is it for me. So thank you again to our founders, our investors, and you folks, our audience. Have a great rest of the day.